A disability is something that has a major impact on your life. Every disability is different. And it's never the same thing for two people. I am blind in my right eye totally and partially sighted in my left eye. I was 18 years old. We were traveling way too fast on a gravel road. It broke my neck, my back. My Asperger's syndrome and my cerebral palsy. I have anxiety and depression. People would have no idea just talking to me. Being independent means different things to different people. I want to live in my own house. I want to pay my own bills. Live independently and not rely on other people. When someone is not able to live as independently as they can, it does have a detrimental effect on people's physical and mental well-being. It's no complicated thing. It's just that people with disabilities want to be included. Plenty of people get stuck in ruts when they feel like they can't overcome something in their life. That's where Lyft comes in. Living independently for today and tomorrow. Lyft. We help people of all ages and all types of disabilities find the resources or acquire the skills to live as independently as possible. We serve the southeastern 18 counties here at the Billings office. We have a variety of things that we offer. We can help with grant funding for adaptive equipment. Maybe a home modification so they're able to access their home. We help people to find that funding. Helping people apply for social security benefits. Medicaid, Medicare, housing. They have a peer support group. Peer support, I think, is key. Sharing life experiences is one of the most powerful things to help people who might be new to disability, who might be struggling with their disability. Youth transitions is kids that are transitioning out of high school. They need to learn those adulting skills. It might be rent an apartment, learn how to grocery shop, budgeting. Help someone advocate for themselves in a school or an employment setting. One of our biggest strengths is providing folks with information and referral. If we can't help you, we hope to know who can. A lot of times we'll have a potential consumer call in and they think that they just have one need and it turns out that we end up finding three or four things we can actually do for them. You can just come in and say, hey, I, I feel like I have this going on. Can you help me? And we can, which is so cool to me. I love that. Most of us on staff at Lyft have identified ourselves as having one or more disabilities. That is helpful in many cases. It's easier to empathize with someone when you yourself have struggled with a disability. This is what we specialize in. This is who we are, and this is what we do. And it costs nothing to go to Lyft. It's a nonprofit organization, and they're there to help. Somebody that was a consumer that was working with Lyft was asked to do an art project. He visualized that the balloon helps to lift people up. And then it became the logo, and it stuck. There's been success on all kinds of levels. It's really rewarding to have a consumer go, hey, I was able to do this by myself today. We want people to live their best life as independent as possible. Live as everyone else in society, and live as a part of society, not apart from society. Everybody needs help. Sometimes you just need a little more help, and that's okay. That's absolutely okay. There's plenty of life to live still, and there's a way you can do it. Keep chipping away at it, little by little by little. Knowledge is power. Let's share it for crying out loud. Send us an email, give us a call. We'll do our best to help. We can definitely help figure out what your needs are and get started on that. We're one of many steps in the path to independence and we're happy to be serving people here in the community.
Good day and welcome to Living Well in Montana. Living Well in Montana is a program of living independently for today and tomorrow, or LIFT as we like to call ourselves. Um, LIFT is what is known as an independent living center. We are a nonprofit source of information, resources, and advocacy for people with all types of disabilities of all ages across our 18 county service area in southeastern and south central Montana. To learn more about LIFT, I encourage you to visit our website at www.liftt.org or you can download our mobile app for your Apple or Android device. Just search LIFTT in your favorite app store. My name is uh, Jed Barton and I am privileged to be a public relations specialist at LIFT. Um, the foundational legislation and regulations that created LIFT and approximately the 400, our 400 sibling uh, centers for independent living across the United States um, lists out a set of core services that we are charged with providing to the disability community in our particular service area. Among those are information and referral, skills training, peer-to-peer -peer support, individual and systems advocacy, institutional to community living transitions, and youth transitions. It is that last one I mentioned, youth transitions, that is our topic today, as I once again have the pleasure of being joined by Jennifer Hawkinson. Jennifer is our um, regional manager at our Glendive office. And um, with her years of experience, not only with Lyft, but with uh, Action for Eastern Montana and the Boys and Girls Club of Dawson County, um, I think it's fair to say that Jen, you are our in-house expert when it comes to youth related, all things youth related. Yes, when I was at Action, I did youth employment and training, so yes. Um, so, Jen, welcome back. Um, and we had you on the show um, in September to talk a little bit about youth transitions at the start of the school year. And now perhaps it is fitting that we welcome you back here now at May as the academic year is wrapping up. Um, why don't you remind our audience um, what exactly youth transitions is and how it and why it's a core service of, in, of Centers for Independent Living? So Youth Transitions came around because LIFT does provide those independent living skills, teaching those independent living skills, like learning to grocery shop, learning how to rent an apartment, um, how do you get your utilities turned on, how do you get a job. And so I think the Youth Transitions, part of it came because people were kind of focusing on the adults and this gives us an opportunity to go, hey, youth need to know these skills. So, um, yeah, it's, it's those adulting skills are what we're trying to teach these kids and not wait until the bitter end when they're getting out of high school or living on their own to, to learn these skills. Right. Um, the definition of youth in some of our enabling legislation is 14 to 24, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. I've, um, I've seen people up to age 30 that don't have those skills that just need a little bit of help. So, I, yep. I turned, I turned 40 in a couple of weeks, and I think there's a few things mentioned there I could use some help with. Okay. Um, <laughs> what, so you mentioned some things, but what specific youth transitions services can LIFT provide? So... The things we can, it's actually, um, it's per student or per youth. Mm -hmm. So I actually had something that came across my desk the other day I thought was super fascinating. And it was a list of like skills that people should know, like what to do for safety, hygiene, and that kind of stuff. And you rate it on like don't know kind of know, oh, I know a little more than average, mm -hmm. or yeah, I have the skill down. So um, 
my thought process because I am working with a youth that is graduating high school this year and mom reached out to me and we are working on some of those youth transition skills. And so I sent it to him and said, hey, why don't you pick two or three off this list and that's what we'll work on. I think the biggest thing is to break it down into achievable little sections. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if someone wanted to learn how to wash laundry, mm -hmm. their first task would be to um, learn how to use the washer. And so I had a kid one time and his mom came in and was like, he needs youth transition, he needs to learn this stuff. And I'm like, okay, where do, we, where do you want to start? And she's like, he needs to do laundry. And so she thought we were going to come in and physically show him how to do laundry. And I'm like, nope, I'm sorry, we're going to do note cards. And so I wrote down all the directions and broke it down into small steps. And I'm like, okay, so you put the clothes in the washer, mm -hmm. you turn on the washer. When the washer's done, you put it in the dryer. When it comes out of the dryer, fold it and put it away. So the next time they came back in, mom says, I can't get him to switch the laundry. And I said, do you have a cell phone? And he said, well, yeah. And I go, set a timer. Mm -hmm. Set a timer for the length of the washer. When that alarm goes off, go put it in the dryer. Set another timer for when the dryer goes off, and then that'll be your cue to go on and fold it and put it away. So we do stuff like that. Um, setting up appointments, I've found that people aren't really sure how to do. Youth aren't sure how to do. Mm -hmm. Like how to get a hold of a doctor, how to, how to make that call a dentist, haircuts, any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Um, well, obviously, every individual is different, and mm -hmm. life lessons are imparted for better and worse from to all of us from the day we are born. Mm -hmm. um, when should students and parents really begin focusing on transition goals and um, how do we, how do you do that in a way that doesn't make it overwhelming on top of everything that your average middle or high schooler is going through when, when sure. the algebra test or the sure. divisional playoffs are right. looming large? So what I would recommend is starting very young. Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing dishes, have your kids help do the dishes, even as young as six, seven years old. Um, you do not want to wait till the bitter end, like I said, to teach these skills. I have um, two examples. I had a friend with a 16-year-old daughter, and she told me her daughter had never done laundry, and I was shocked. I'm like, your kid's going to be going out into the world soon. They need to know these skills. And <clears throat> I've also had a couple youth that I've worked with, and we've talked about the things that you're learning at home, like those basic chores and stuff, you're going to have to use them in the real world. At a job, no, you know, if <clears throat> you need to learn how to take initiative because no employer wants to stand there and tell your employee what to do every minute of every day. So taking initiative is huge. Um, <clears throat> even like making sure that your work is done thoroughly, doing chores, that's a great way to start that. And I've helped kids with chore charts. I have one youth that I worked with several years ago. He's probably, I think he's close to 30 now. He was probably 11 or so at the time. And him and his mom came in and she's like, I, we want to start teaching him how to do chores. So we came up with a chore chart and we asked, what kind of chores are you willing to do to start this out? So the plan was put a couple down and then progressively add as he became proficient in it. And he said, I would like to clean the cat box. And you could have knocked us over with a feather because that is not what we expected him to pick. But the funny part is, he's almost 30 now, his mom told me last year he still uses a chore chart and makes his family use them. So this is something so that's he, he's lasted. he's raising his own yeah. children now? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Not his own children, it's for him. Well, well but you yeah. said he made his family. His, like, mom and dad, brother. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Misunderstood. Yes. Um, how does Lyft interact, cooperate, integrate our services 
with those that are um, um, provided by uh, Montana Vocational Rehabilitation? So we are contracted through Vocational Rehabilitation for what's called PRIETS. So PRIETS is pre-employment training and it gives kids an opportunity to get that work experience. And so what will happen is if we run across a kid, we can refer them to Voc Rehab and then they will refer them back to us. And we are able to find work sites. We are able to provide support at those work sites um, and just give kids experience. One of the things that I am huge on is letting kids pick where they want to work. It doesn't make sense for me to say, hey, let's go work at Albertsons, but really you want to work at Dairy Queen. It doesn't make any. So right. when we, we kind of meet with the parents and them and ask, where are your top three? And then we start there and, and work so our way down. older students because employment age in this state is 15? Yes. Right? So they have to be, they can start at 14. 14. Yep. And they have to be just like in the eighth grade or just graduating eighth grade. Okay. We can't do anybody younger. Um, they do have to have a diagnosis. Okay. And for lift services, you don't have to have a diagnosis. Right. You, you just have to, to be able to identify right. a disability. Right. So, um, yeah. And then once they're out of school, they can get referred to Voc Rehab for the adult side. And the right. same thing yeah. goes. They can get referred back um, to us and we provide that support. Right. And, and Voc Rehab gives access to job coaches. And, mm -hmm. and, and that. that's what we do. We're the job coaches. Oh, okay. You guys yep. do that. But, okay. Um, what can parents and students, and, and again, one of the things we talk about it, um, I've heard talked about in youth transitions at IL conferences and stuff is to make sure that the student is the one driving the train as much as possible, not just the parent. Absolutely. But what, what can parents and students do within the K through 12 school setting to make sure they are getting connected with voc rehab or lift or job training, higher education or other transition services? So actually Lyft can help with all of those. We can refer to Voc Rehab. I've helped kids fill out um, like college applications. I have helped them fill out um, financial aid for college. We actually use a website, it's called MTCIS. And they can, a lot of kids, if you say, what do you wanna be? They kinda, eh. Uh. It's career, career exploration. Right? Yes, it's career, career exploration. Yep, and we have two assessments and what I like is it kinda combines the two and where the kids' interests lie for the kind of money that they want to be making. Mm -hmm. So, and then they narrow down that job, that list of jobs. Yeah, that is, can be an interesting exercise. I've seen you. Yes. Seen it administered. Yes. I love the reality hours. check because it is a slap in the face of mm -hmm. this is really what you got to pay. Yeah. I mean, One yeah. thing I would suggest for parents is to sit down when your kids are like, junior high age and pay bills with them even if they're all online pay those bills with them so they know where this money goes mm -hmm. um, one story that I absolutely get a kick out of is I had a 20 year old and I had this is when I was working at action and I had stopped to drop something at her house and she picked up her MDU bill and said what do I do with it and I'm like well you pay it and I had to explain the whole process mm -hmm. of how to pay it how to send it in the mail where the return address went, the mm -hmm. whole nine yards. So yeah, I, I w would love to see kids being able to have those skills before they are out on their own. Well, that is very important. And when you add the, no, searching for the right word, the complications for lack of a better term of disability into the mix, it can mm -hmm. be um, even more um, you know, because they're just things that, you know, we expect, I guess, milestones would might be a way to put it, that there are milestones that, you know, you, you, you walk into um, high, a high school, whether it's 
Billings West or Dawson County or anywhere mm -hmm. in, you know, nine, eight, seven out of 10 of those kids may be going to college or maybe doing X or Y or Z. And sometimes the kids with disabilities, um, you know, every transition is different, but at least I've noticed is you're balancing the, the if the child has thought of it, the, the, their expectations may be unrealistic on terms of, you know, which which is true of many children, many mm -hmm. young adults, um, you know, um, not, um, but you, you almost have, um, I can't remember, I think it was David Frum's line, the soft bigotry of low expectations for the parent. I think people just assume that kids know. They just assume right. that kids know what to do. Well, there, 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 there is it. But what I'm talking about is specifically when you're dealing with youth with disabilities out in the world, the parents, you know, and, and parents are naturally protective. I'm not mm -hmm. throwing accusations or, or saying they're bad. But mm -hmm. in the handful of experiences I have, the parents are... Again, I'll use that phrase again, the soft bigotry of low expectations. Um, you know, that they don't think the child could do what they end up doing, whether it's get a job or go to college. Mm -hmm. or, and so... I'm and, actually working with a parent and a child right now with something like what you're talking right. about. And so this parent reached out and she's like, I... I want to teach my child this stuff. Mm -hmm. There's gaps. And she is an on-the-ball parent. Like, mm -hmm. she has, she knows her kid, mm -hmm. and she is really up on everything. But she reached out to me because she's like, I don't know how to break these steps down to help my kid, like putting on pants. And she's like, how am I going to teach him how to do that? So we had a great discussion about, okay, we're just going to start with step one. And then, you know, we as we talked our way through it, it was like, oh, okay, now I see the end result. And so as um, independent living specialists, we help people with their goals. And that was a goal that he and she wanted was to learn how to dress himself. And so currently we're working on step one, get it over your one foot. That's step one. And maybe getting it up to your knee. And then step two would be, let's work on the other leg. And then, you know, as we progress, it's, mm -hmm. we're going to add more steps. Yeah. But let's get through step one first. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, you know, and obviously every transition is, um, experience is different because every individual mm -hmm. is different. But are there some commonalities you've seen doing this over the years? You know, there are some, but I I think the biggest is having that support and just knowing that you have somebody behind you going, you got this, you can do this. Um, yeah, and being honest and saying, hey, uh, one, one big kind of joke that I have when I meet with parents and kids and we talk about these transition services are what happens if your basement floods? By the way, mom and dad are not an option to call. What do you do? And the kid really has to think like, wow, what would I do? And I've had some that say, well, you know, I think I, I would I'd get my I'd get the water stopped. And I'm like, great, but you have this full basement full of all this stuff that's wet. What do you do with it? And so we've had those com conversations. And it seems like the commonality is that kids seem to not know this. They all seem to not know the same information, like how to defrost a freezer, um, how to cook at least two good meals for yourself mm -hmm. that isn't ramen, you know, um, or a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Um, what kind of things to do when you apply for a job, how you present yourself at an interview. Mm -hmm. um, 
just yeah there's there's quite a few commonalities honestly okay interesting um do you have a we've got about a minute and a half here um do you have a one particular oh, i won't even say success story but maybe that is a good phrase that um you'd like to share or? sure um the kid with the chore charts still tickles me to this day um, I recently worked with a young lady and um, we talked about how things at home, what she's doing for chores and learning those skills are going to help her in life and I could just see the light bulb going on over her head. Like, oh wow, yeah, I see where that can, that would cross over. And I'm like, yeah, when you're, when you're an adult, nobody comes in to clean your bathroom. Uh, nobody comes in to do your dishes. And so we talked about that. Um, there's another kid that I worked with several years ago, and we talked about how to comparison shop. And so I actually went to the grocery store. She had a list. I went to the grocery store with her, and we talked about how to compare prices. Like a smaller bag of cheese might be cheaper, but if you go through a lot of cheese, the bigger bag of cheese is going to save you more money in the end right, that, because it's cheaper that, that way. Little, that little um, mm -hmm. print there on the, that says price per ounce or right. price per pound. Yeah. So we talked about that. And yeah, so, and she's currently has a kid and doing great. I'm just super proud of her. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, again, if you're interested in receiving um, services from Lyft, whether it's Youth Transitions or many other um, services. Um, you can visit our website at uh, lift.org or find our mobile app on your Apple or Android devices or just pick up the phone and give us a call in Billings at 406-259-5181 uh, or in Glendive at 406-948-8500. Um, Jen, thank you for uh, joining us, and um, every, everybody have a good day.